Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We praise you for your mysteries. We praise you for your goodness. We praise you for your love. We praise you for the salvation of our souls. We praise you for as many you shall save today. We praise you for bringing us before you. Our Father in glory, we look up unto heaven. For asking you right, just Father, speak to the heart of every one of us. Give us grace to understand your word. I pray that as we listen to this counsel, that our lives will never be the same. Pray for as many that are not preparing for the rapture. Father, open their eyes and give them the grace to prepare. And I pray for as many that are sleeping. Father, bring them back to faith. And I pray for everyone that is here today who will be a beneficiary of this message. All I'm asking you walk on us. Transform our lives. Make all of us rapturable things. My prayer and decree is that none of the brethren or those that are hearing me and that shall hear from me this hour that shall miss the rapture of these things. I pray make us to be rapturable. Father, we can see the situation in the land and in the whole world. And the one thing we can make out of what is happening everywhere is that the coming of Jesus is at hand. My daddy, all I'm asking you, give us grace to make our way right, to amend our ways, and to be holy and qualified for the rapture of these things. As we listen to your word, speak to our hearts. Give us grace to be doers of this world and not hear us of the world alone. Bless us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Shall we get seated? Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 29. Chapter 7, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they had not. And they that weep as though they were not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the passion of this world, but says the word. Verse 35. And these I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that you may attend upon the law without distraction. In Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, I read, from verse 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the day of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, 
the married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they viewed it. But the same day, the Lord went out of Sodom. It ran fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Everyone should know that the activities of this world shall not cease before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. To rapture the saints, to rapture the church. Everything will continue as it is. Those into business will continue in their businesses. Those also are into schooling will continue in education. Those that are on journey in fact, journey will continue. Those into marriage, I want to let you know they will continue in marriage. In fact, those into one activity or, or the other will continue in activities. Preaching shall not cease. Politics shall not cease. I want to let you know those that are given into one thing or the other will continue until the trumpet sound. It happened in the days of Noah. Likewise, in the days of Lot. It will happen the same way. Everybody will be into one thing or the other on that great day. The trumpets are sound. Those into farming will be in the farming. Those ones are uh, given to anything, marriage, I mean, doing their marriage, those are given to one ceremony or the other, they'll be into such thing until the trumpet sound. Now, listen to me. If you have been coming and you are not born again, this is an opportunity because rapture can take place any time, even now. So, what are you going to do? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The same Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Please open your Bible. Let's see something. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say there? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2, verse 2, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer diaring? So, even though the Bible said all have sinned, we must not continue in sin. Because that is the remedy to sin. If you sin, look at Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Let me show you something there. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Chapter 18. I read verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the souls, soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So, if you continue in sin, he said, you shall die. That means, you shall be cut off from God internally. Why? Why? A Christian is not a sinner. A sinner is not a Christian. Now look at the Bible in First John chapter three verse eight. First John chapter three verse eight. First John chapter three. I read verse eight. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Can you see it? Why did Jesus come into the world? To destroy the works of the devil. 
And you cannot claim to be a Christian and claim to be a sinner at the same time because Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil inside you. Now look at verse 9. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for he still remains to him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. If you are born again, you have the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God cannot make you to continue in sin. Because you are born of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God in you will make you to live righteous life. So, verse 8 says, a Christian is not a sinner. Verse 9 says, a sinner is not a Christian. And what is sin? Look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 17. Hey, please look at your Bible. 1 John chapter 5 verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. Now, what are unrighteousness? First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. All unrighteousness. We want to know what is unrighteousness that is sin. Chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of the snake with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You can see the outline of sin, unrighteousness, that's so numerous. Anger is sin. Lying is sin. Pride is sin. Unbelief is sin. Selfishness is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. You need to search your life. Hatred is a terrible sin. Envy is sin. You need to search your life. Contention, strife, bitterness, keeping malice, bearing grudge. Lusting after evil things. Love of money, love of the world. These are terrible things. Insincerity, unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness is sin. Blasphemy is a terrible sin. You need to search your life. Backbiting, speaking evil of other people. These are terrible things. I mean their ways. Confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I will do them no, no more. Cause same people. Swearing with heaven and earth, watching idol, making idol, having idol in your heart, going to native doctors to make sure, going for, to native doctors for pain reading, consulting the dead. All these are terrible things. Or are you a native doctor? Gather those things and burn them. I mean, your ways. All unrighteousness is sin. I don't know the evil you are into. You see all these people. Listen to me. All these people are into, you know, secret court, open court, uh, marine court, witchcraft court, local or international court, campus court, any kind of court is sin. If you have their property, gather them and burn them. I mean, you are wait. I don't know the evil you are into. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I want to take note. You see all these people that are stealing, picking pockets, stealing from their father, their mother, from their brothers and sisters, stealing from their shop, from their business, from where they are working. That is sin. Those that break home of people, those do burglary, that is sin. All those involved in, so, um, you know, I, I'm robbery. Killing people with gone and then snatching their property, that is sin. Those involved into fraud. They do black people, white people, they are dupes. Confess and say, Lord, I am sorry. I will do it no more. And if you are into robbery or stealing or fraud, when we are giving offering here, we don't need your money. Take your money home. Don't give us money. I mean, you are with. I don't know the wickedness I into. Search your life. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. All those people are involved into 
fornication, adultery, homosexual, lesbianism, gay. Confess them and repent and promise God no more. Those involved with masturbation, don't do it, and that's a sin. All those into prostitution, say they are bought for money or visit a prostitute. Whether they are into private prostitution or public, or you are visiting them, that is wickedness. Repent and promise God no more. Ask for mercy. All those involved into child trafficking, into rape, into abortion, or even abortion, these are terrible sins. Or you are into hired assassins, into ritual killing, into kidnapping and killing, or terrorism. I mean, you are repent and say, Lord God, I'm sorry. I renounce this evil. Surrender to Jesus to give you entire life. And if you are into these things, don't give us offering. We don't need it. I mean, you are with. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Now, is acceptable. Are you into fighting, quarreling, beating your wife, disobedient your husband, and you don't do the work where you are employed and you collect salary? Or you don't pay those working for you. These are terrible, unrighteous, and sin. Repent and ask for the mercy of God. Those that give bribe and take bribe, those that stop money from people because of their uniform, because of their position, because of their God, repent and promise God no more. I mean, you are ways. I don't know if we are into. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow, maybe too late. Those that into smuggling. Confess it and say, Lord, I'm sorry. All those that take snuff, smoke cigarettes, take in their hand cocaine, heroin, hard drug, confess them and renounce them, don't touch them anymore. Don't give us an offering if it's your business. I mean, you are with. I don't know the evil you are into. Now is acceptable time. Are you into taking alcoholic drinks? Local one or foreign one, or white mimbo brukutu beer, one percent to half percent. Are you working in brewery? Are you a distributor? We don't need your business, that money here. Repent and ask God for mercy. The Lord will show you your mercy. Don't do them anymore. Change that business, a better business, to the glory of God. As I round up, search your life. You see all these people that marry and divorce. That is sin. Those are into polygamous marriage. Your second wife and third wife and fourth wife. That is sin. Or your man that marry them. One, two, three, four. What are you doing with them? Remove the second one, third one, fourth one. It is your first wife. If a second woman, second wife, pack your load and go back to your parents. I mean, you are ways. If a second wife, third wife, fourth wife, pack and go. There is no more time. Jesus is coming. I mean, you are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow. May be too late. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is for better, for worse. Until the day, do your part. Now look at this place. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Chapter 19, and verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall give to his wife. And they twins shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twins but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So you can see, marriage, if you see a man and a woman, until they do your part. If you made a mistake, do restitution before it is too late. So you can make rapture. If you are here now, and you are among those that paint your hands, and paint your leg, paint your mouth, and paint your eye, paint your body, and bleach your face, and bleach your body, don't do that anymore. Or you put extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment and weave on, their rings and jewelry, or bango, or rings, chains. What are you doing with them? This is a property of my kingdom. 
You don't need those chairs and rings. Throw them away. Amend your ways. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. My look, if you're a young man that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, you play the hair like a woman. That is sin. You don't need that kind of thing. I mean, you are well. If a woman that dress expose your chest, your armpit, your tummy, your waist, expose your nakedness to seduce, a Christian is not a seducer. A seducer is not a Christian. Cover your body properly well. My Bible tells me in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30, when they ask for what shall they do? So they go after painting, after ornament. Whenever a woman has spoiled, a young man has spoiled, they begin to make up. You don't need to do those things because whoever that sees you as a Christian knows that that's the mark of those who are spoiled. I mean, you are ways. Are you a woman wearing trousers? Are you a man wearing skirt and blouse? And you think you're on top of the world. You have a fashion. My friend, that is abomination. Look at the Bible. In the Deuteronomy of the 22 verse 5. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear the which pertaining to a man. Now that the man put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. They are what? Abomination. And abominable people cannot enter heaven. So take note. Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8. Let's see. The part that they will not enter heaven. Are you wearing trousers as a woman? Are you wearing skirt and blouse, blouse as a man? Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, take note, abominable, which are trousers, skirt and blouse are made with you. Murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars to have their part in the lake which born with fire and brimstone, which the second death that I will cast into hell fire. I pray it shall never be your portion. Can I hear you say amen? Amen, your ways. It shall be well for you. Remember, I have not spoken to condemn you, but to bring to conviction to you what sin is all about. So you can say, I'm sorry. I will do them no more. And God will show you mercy. Don't forget, in Proverbs, chapter 28, please, open your Bible, let us see. Chapter 28, verse 13, open your Bible. Open your Bible, Proverbs 28, verse 13. I read Proverbs 28, and verse 13. Chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But who sort of confessed them and forsaken them to have mercy? If you will confess these things, you are convicted, you are doing, as I will do them no more. And you surrender to Jesus, thank you, Lord, your personal Savior, God will show you your mercy. Remember, God has made provision for the sins that are past. If you look at Exodus chapter 2, verse 13, Exodus, he said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And he uses it as a symbol. The blood of a lamb without blemish, animal, is a symbol of the blood of Jesus, which will come in the New Testament. So, God is looking for a blood, because in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 20, he says, Without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sin. And so, the blood of animal was shed, but God is looking for blood of the righteous, the blood of Jesus. Look at the Bible in John chapter 1. Please look at the Bible. John chapter 1. Chapter 1. John Gospel. Chapter 1. I read verse 29. Chapter 1 verse 29. The next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that Lamb? Jesus Christ. Is the Lamb, by whose blood our sins are washed away. No wonder the Bible said in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 19 verse 30, 
When Jesus shared the blood, he said, It is finished. The end of all sacrifice was, he said, It's all over. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. He is not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If you want to reconcile with God, it is through Jesus Christ by the means of his blood. And in John chapter 10, verse 10b, look at the Bible. John chapter 10, verse 10b, it says, and I read, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us what? Eternal life. And eternal life shall be your portion in Jesus' name. You will never perish. You will not go to hell. As you receive eternal life and go on to live righteous life, the grace of God will sustain you. And rapture of the saint heaven at last shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 8, verse 36. John chapter 8, verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Total freedom shall be yours. Don't forget, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Will you come? As you come to the Father through Jesus today, salvation shall be yours. Can somebody say Amen? Yeah. Now, if you look at this place, in John chapter 1 verse 12, look at your Bible. John chapter 1 verse 12. Please read your Bible. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to then gave him power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as receive who? What power did they receive? Today that power will come upon you. And you shall become a son and a daughter of God in Jesus' name. Now, take notes. Once you receive that power, there shall be transformation. You shall become a new creature. There shall be newness of life. That's what the Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what happened is a new creature. All things are passed away, the whole of things have become new. Take note. If any man be in who? He becomes what? A new creature. All the old things will be washed away. It shall become a new person. Today, that shall be your portion. Don't forget, in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you call him today? Honestly, you shall be saved. Your name shall be cancelled in the book of death and be written in the book of life in Jesus' name. Are you ready to give your life to Jesus? Or you bow down your head. Confess that sin. Don't stand up, bow down your head. Confess your sins and ask for the mercy of God. Everybody pray. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. Mercy, O Lord. 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 Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. Everybody pray. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. I am sorry, O Lord. Forgive me. Save me. I repent of all of every known of no sin. Make me pure. Transform my life. Change me. Lord, give me salvation. Give me newness of life. In Jesus' name, for prayer. Now, you have had message on rapture. You have had message that there is no more time. If you are ready to give your life to Jesus, just stand up. Those who are sitting down, to sit down. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just stand up. I want to pray for you. If you are there now, you have had a message, and you want to give your life to Jesus, stand up wherever you are. You want to make the rapture of the saints. You want to amend their ways. Stand up. 
I want to pray for you. God bless you. Other people can still need, those people that don't need to do that, just sit down. Those who are standing now, wherever you are, sing this song. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord. I am sorry. Eyes closed and head bowed. Eyes closed. The person that is into adultery, can you raise your hand up? I want to break that yoke for you. No more adultery. Keep your hands up and pray for you. Eyes closed everywhere. God bless you. Keep your hands up. God bless you. God bless you. That person smoking and drinking. Can you keep your hands up? I said, I'm sorry. Person take in their hand, one smoking cigarette. That person involved with masturbation. Can you keep your hands up and ask God for mercy? That person has shed blood, and the blood is crying for vengeance. Keep your hands up and say, God, show me mercy. That person is that into fraud. The person that commit abortion also keep your hands up. Ask for the mercy of God. God will forgive you. That person is that into masturbation. They want into homosexual. Keep your hands up and pray for you. Ask for the mercy of God. All that those are into stealing, robbery, breaking home of people, stealing where they're walking. Keep your hands up. Those into unbelief, into lying, into anger, into hatred, into unforgiveness. Keep your hands up and say, God, no more. I am sorry. Show me mercy. No more bitterness and contention and fighting and quarreling or doing evil. I'm sorry, O oh Lord. Now, say this word after me. Almighty God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me, and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Watch my sins away from my heart. From today, I reject the devil. I renounce all his evil. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Can saw my name in the book of death, write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sing no more. In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your two hands up. Sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. Oh. To Jesus, bless the Savior, I surrender, I surrender, again, I Keep your hands up and pray for you. The merciful Father, the compassionate Father, I come in the name of Jesus Christ and I present each and everyone before you. Whatsoever they have done against humanity, against you, known and unknown to them, 
Father, in your heart, remember me. Every yoke of power that made them to do evil, by your authority, I break that yoke. Father, from this day, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. Cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. My daddy, all my brethren that are asking you for purity, for sanctification, for holiness, so they can make rapture the saint, wherever they are now, as they raise their hands up, Father, in the name of Jesus, approve the root of sin. Sanctify their heart. Make us holy. Make us pure. Give us grace for holiness in Jesus' name. I pray from today, they will lose appetite of thinking evil, of doing evil, of seeing evil. Father, do it for us in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say, Amen? Oh yeah, plead the blood of Jesus three times. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Can I hear you say a big amen to that prayer? I congratulate.